What's going on, Instagram fam? This is your boy, T-Rod, Thomas Rodriguez, founder of Automation Empire, with my boy, Trey, who just flew out here from Michigan. For those who know, I've been doing a lot of my IG lives with a lot of my Amazon Automation clients in person, so whether I'm flying out to them or they're flying out to you know me, we like to show their revenue, we like to show their profit, we like to talk about if they were suspended, we like to talk about all the ups and downs so that if you are watching this video on my Facebook, my Instagram, or YouTube, that you can make an informed decision if you feel that this is a right investment for you. So we're gonna dive into you know what Trey does for a living, how long he's been with me, what he thinks of my servants, and so much more. So Trey, I appreciate you coming up, my brother. Sure. So why don't we dive in and let everyone know you know who you are. You're not an actor, right? I'm not like, an actor. Not I didn't pay you and your family to be here. <laughs> no, sir. Okay, came out here with his wife and his beautiful daughter. So I'm uh, Trey Jones from Metro Detroit, Michigan. I am a serial entrepreneur. I've been doing, being on my own, my own boss since 2017, 2016, and now we're just you know living life. <laughs> what did you do before you became an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, I was a college athlete, and then I dropped out of college to pursue um, what I'm doing now. Quick thing about Trey is Trey became, those who know me, let me just say this. I started obviously selling on Amazon back in 2014. In 2015, I was doing it myself for almost a year, a lot of trial and error to the point where I just wanted to smash my freaking computer. It was not fun trying to figure this out. I didn't get a course. I was just learning a lot of the in and outs on my own. Till 2015, I was getting really tired of processing 50 to 100 plus orders a day and doing customer service and handling new product listings and doing this and everything. It was really tiresome and exhausting. So I eventually found a team that manages obviously my Amazon automation services. Now, the same guy, the same manager is the guy that pretty much overlooks and runs, again, a lot of my Amazon automation service clients. So I've been with this guy for about six years now. And so in 2015, again, our team wasn't nearly as big because we didn't need it that big. But in 2015, he took over and he started running my store once I found him. And then I opened up the doors. And again, because the, because he did that, it opened up the doors, should I say, for me, so that I could open this you know, for other people and teach other people how to do drop shipping. So I was teaching in 2015 to about 2000, maybe early 17, maybe even almost late 2017, of how to do drop shipping on Amazon. Trey here was actually one of my students. Do you remember how much you paid me? Five grand. Five grand for the, you know, again, Amazon, I taught you one on one. How did you do how did you do with those teachings? Um, so I I bought the course in December, so around Christmas time. I did five K that month. And then profit or revenue? And profit. Awesome. And, and you were doing this yourself? Yes. Awesome. Um and then up till April of twenty was it eighteen? Yep. That's when I got into the automation. So up till April is when I was running it myself. I was getting hella stressed out. Hell anxiety. Um, I wasn't even able to travel or really live my life because I was constantly on my laptop handling everything. Um, and then from there, you know, everything. I we got into automation. I did fifteen thousand in profit, and as soon as I hit fifteen thousand in profit, I paid Tommy. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so now you paid a difference, though, correct? Yes. So he paid about again ten thousand dollars. Back in the day, again, I know for those who are watching this video and you know that I'm currently 30,000, you're probably like, damn, I wish I knew you back then. I wish I could have got that 10 or $15,000 obviously deal or whatnot. But I mean, you live and you learn and obviously the value now has obviously increased dramatically from obviously when I started. So now your experience from when I started to now, like the structure to where it is. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like I know you were frustrated that sometimes, so why don't you tell people like a little bit, and, and you can be unbiased as you want, and tell the people like how you really felt back in the day, after like things were going sideways. Okay, so how I really felt? Yeah, when I let first, know. When I first got into the service, I was skeptical, I was scared, I was anxious, I was micromanaging. All the negative things that come out of emotions of investing came out, um, and when, when this was going on, I was constantly in Tommy's DMs, inbox, Facebook, Instagram. All the time. If I had his phone number, I would have been in his, his <laughs> text. <laughs> um, so from there, I was just constantly over monitoring. Cause again, like I was running the business myself and then I just handed it to him. Mm. Um, so I was just kind of worrying, kind of treating it as if it was my own kid. So I didn't like, you know, I didn't like not having control. And then once I let go of it and gave him the keys, I mean, I obviously built that confidence in the system and the team. 
and from there it grew and got better every year. Um, the first year, I we there was like no communication at all with the team. I couldn't get through to anyone. Um, constant, 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 constant. I can't stress enough how constant it was that I wasn't making enough profit. Um, so I know with this business, everyone wants to come in and make millions of dollars off rip, and that's just not realistic. You have to let the business grow, let it breathe. Um, don't suffocate it, otherwise you will kill your own business. And that, again, you're working with other people, humans, so like you can't just get stressed out and then throw that on everyone else. You gotta control yourself, be poised. And I didn't have that when I first started. Um, again, again, it's like being a boy and then raising into a man. So I had to learn all the characteristics that I had to be to be better. And just to piggyback off a little bit of what he said, and by the way, where'd you fly in from today, uh, yesterday? I think you came yesterday. Where'd yeah, you fly in from? I, I flew in from Metro Detroit, and then I flew into Tampa, went to Clearwater Beach, and now we're here. Okay, we're well, over here in uh, St. Peter, St. Petersburg, Florida. So again, just to kind of piggyback, when I first started this Amazon automation, I didn't have it all figured out. I just knew that my team knew how to manage my stores. I didn't know everything from the spreadsheets, and I honestly wish I had it mapped out a little bit better. I wish I anticipated, should I say, that the amount of people that were deciding to knock, knock at my door, like, hey, I wanna pay you, because I was launching this in late 2017, and it wasn't until 2000, like maybe early 18, that I decided to make it public so that people could pay. Again, it was something that we were doing on the back end, but I could never have anticipated that when I made this public, so many people were gonna come out of the woodworks and say, I want it, and I'm like, you just told me a month and a half, two months ago, you didn't have the money, or six months ago, whatever it was, that you couldn't even afford my Amazon coaching. And now all of a sudden you have the money for my Amazon automation. So it was, it, it, I was just really thrown off. And again, one thing I would have learned back in the day if, if I could go back is that I would anticipate that growth. I would have put the structure there to anticipate growing into it, not growing out of it. So in any business, you are gonna have bumps, you're gonna have bruises. And again, his business is no different. This man has been suspended, I think about two, two or three times now? Three times. Three times, so in about three years, basically an average of once a year. And yet, last year in 2020, he still made six figures net profit. Now, obviously compared to when you were doing the Amazon dropshipping yourself, mm -hmm. very hands-on. Yes. Would you, did you do any work on this? Nothing, only thing I had to do was to swap out my credit card information. Okay, so you didn't have to nag me about no. this. You didn't have to like. How, how does no. how does everything look compared to back then? Though, like, would you say it's gotten ten times better? Like, what do you think has been yeah. like the game changer? It's this cookie cutter sheet now. Like, you have it mapped out to how to start it, permissions, um, customer questions. You got the answers, the Q and A's for that. Um, you have a responsive team that handles every question, every problem. I mean, everything is. Is really what it should have been from the start. From the start. Yeah. And you know what? You live and you learn. And that's just business, that's life, that's relationships, that's that's anything that you're doing. Hell, you know, in some of this video, I'm gonna give you guys some examples of some investments that I do because you know, anytime I do these videos, I always let you guys know when we're talking about revenue, profit. Never invest money that you can aff never afford to lose when you're getting into any business, whether it's my Amazon automation, whether it's stocks, whether it's crypt crypto, whether it's Forex, whether it's a brick and mortar, a gym, it doesn't really matter. Never invest money that you financially can't afford to lose. And if you did lose it, that you know, you're not gonna have to be forced to live on the shoot because now you can't seem to figure out how to pick up the pieces, right? Have you had your money held by Amazon? Because that is something that can happen if you get suspended by Amazon. They can hold your money till you come out of suspension. And if so, what was the most that you've had held? Um, so in 2020, 2020 of February is when my account went down. Uh, I believe it was for review manipulation, which is not a common, common at, it's not common at all. Um, and then from there I had $85,000 tied up for two to three months. So That's there, a lot of money. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Uh, sick to my stomach. Be honest. Couldn't handle it. I was overwhelmed. I thought, and reality is, money is just money. But like at that time, when you have that much tied up, you think that it's like the end of the world. Um, from there, I was just stressed out. I had a baby girl on the way, so I, I really didn't know. It was too many question marks around it. So I was just stressing myself out and overthinking everything versus just handling it and just taking it day by day. And as everyone knows, if you handle a case with Amazon, it could range from one day to three months to hearing a response back from them. Yeah. So, and again, suspensions. 
It is in every single one of my IGTV videos. So people can't say, I didn't know suspensions were a thing. It's in my sales video, how we just redid the sales video. So we're gonna have a new website with a new sales video real soon. The contract makes it real clear that, you know, suspensions are part of the game. It can happen almost at any given time from you lose, uh, don't have enough capital to grow your store. You said you did, and then now all of a sudden we have to slow down your store. So therefore, your sales start to decline and your metrics start to climb, which therefore can put you at risk. Now, we do have a bunch of scripts and what we call fresh tests, which is our portal for drop shipping policy, tracking rate, ODR. We have all that there in case somebody, somebody gets a warning or a phone call from Amazon saying, hey, you got 72 hours. People can actually submit that in advance to save them from getting suspended. And actually last month or in November, there was a case where we had almost 15 stores, literally in days, all get hit with certain violations, certain things. Literally out of those 15 people, 13 sent in one of the scripts we have in our group that I wrote that saved 13 out of the 15 stores. The other two stores, I think one got back and the other one was still currently working on. It can take months to get your store back. It could take days, it could take weeks. Hell, some people can submit an appeal and in three hours, Boom, they're saved. It will vary. I, I'm not Amazon. I can't just call Jeff Bezos and say, hey, Jeff, can you lift this suspension for me? Trust me, I wish I could, but this business, like any other business, has risks, right? So you've seen your share of suspensions. Yep. When you had that $85,000 being held, right? So, and then it got released. Did it feel good? Yeah, I felt like the weight of the world just came off my shoulders. Awesome, so here's what I would like you to do, because people obviously like seeing numbers. At the end of the day, numbers, don't lie. So on this sheet, we obviously have a sheet for the whole year. He was down for about two and a half months out of last year because again, suspension. By the time he started up and again, I think maybe the first or maybe like a couple days, uh, maybe like 10 days into April, his store started back up again and he was good to go and he was making money. Um, so if you wanna show your Amazon app real quick, you could actually show the app and then we'll talk about that. Again, right now, today is January 7th, 2021. And again, my current price of my Amazon automation service is $30,000. So you're at about $20,000 for the month. Yep. Okay, so almost a million dollars in the last 12 months. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So why don't we turn this around and we'll talk about the numbers. Here we have $121,000, okay? Passively, you don't do shit like you said for this, right? No, I don't do anything. So d does making six figures hands-free still work for you? Like this, uh, is that good? Yeah, I'm thinking about buying more stores. There's no reason not to. <laughs> so, and again, this is, this is in about nine and a half months. Now, again, as you can see over here, you have the profits. It does fluctuate. And here's one of the biggest problems that I see when people come into the service or have questions about it, why did one month he make more and one month he made less? And there's no guaranteed set amount of numbers. Like it might not make 20, it might make 20,000 one month and then 15,000 the next month. Maybe they have an issue. Maybe they lost what you call the Amazon buy box, which once you lose that, your sales will tank. And yeah, and right here, I think, which month was it? Yeah, you lost September is when I lost buy box. And you can tell the difference. I'm going from 18,000, 17,000, 13,000, then $500. Yeah. The buy box is a crucial piece of selling on Amazon. And it's something that can take about 90 days from your first sale to get. So when people hear, you hear people talking about, is this a new store or an age store? An age store usually is after three months, right? And then again, over here, you can see refund charges. So he would have made in nine and a half months, almost uh, 145,000, but we also had $25,000 that had to be refunded to the Amazon customers. We do apply them on this so that you guys know that that is part of you know, your sales and that you can see that the money that went back out to the Amazon customers. So still $121,000. Now this is most likely before he paid the team. So if you're gonna ask, is it before or after? I believe this is before. I would obviously have to double check my team, but. If you minus the 30% off the 121,000, that still leaves you, I believe, about 85, 86,000 net take home. Now, if you're curious on taxes, okay, yeah, so yeah, it's about, yeah, that's, it's about 35,000 off. So if you're curious about taxes, now I can't tell you what he's gonna pay on tax. He might have a good tax person that he only might have to pay a couple thousand dollars. You know, just because you make six figures, everyone's like, oh, you're gonna 85,000 after taxes, you only got a profit X, Y, and Z. That's, that's not true to say because there's a lot of people like, hey, let's look at Trump's you know, tax person. He paid 750. You know, me personally, I also have a great CPA where he knows what to write off. We know what business tra transactions can be write off, wrote off, legally speaking, of course. So, so you, you've also been a part of my Facebook group since, literally since I was even coaching people. Yeah. And 
what are your thoughts on the group? Do you feel that the group has been a useful tool for like new people coming in, oh, yourself? Yeah. Absolutely, that's like the backbone of everything. So if anyone has a problem, a comment, question, concern, that's where they go to. And then you have all the sheets now, so it's like hand in hand to have that group. Awesome, and what, again, what we're talking about, so obviously my Facebook group that I have, we have about almost a thousand people in that group. A very few hundred might have been from, just like from coaching back in the day, maybe 150, give or take, maybe even a little less for the rest of my Amazon automation clients. We currently have a little over 700 clients and running, and this year, we prepare to really dominate, put a lot of money back into the infrastructure like I have been, to the VA training, to more quality control, to more management, to more people actually having full access to the VA. That's like one of the next things that we're doing. We have things that are being developed right now, solely branded for my brand, for my clients. We have offices launched, new offices, more space. Everything's just kind of really expanding. Uh, we did so much expansion, should I say, in the year 2020 that, again, him and so many of my other clients were just happy with obviously what it's done. We, we hired someone named Melissa. She's probably on this video. If you, you might even be watching. She's one of my consultants. She's literally put people in play, systems in play. And then she got a lot of these ideas from her own you know, idea. And I was talking about it as a team, as well as my sales team, Ron and Cody. They've come to the table and brought a lot of ideas. So we have a great collective group of people within my company and my, my customer service, to my staff, to the employees, to everything. And it's, it's I, can't, I can't honestly, I'm not overselling when I say like 2021 this year is gonna be dangerous. Golden, yeah, yeah. <laughs> golden, and again, that's not overselling when I say that. So, um, now, guys, when you when you get into business again, I'm gonna say it again that never invest money that you can't afford to lose. When you invested this money back in the day, I know obviously you're in a better position now, but how did you? You obviously knew the risk, yes. Yeah, all the risk, all the risk, all the parameters, all the concerns. I was I threw that out the door and took the risk. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna give you guys some examples of some things that I've done just so you can kind of understand that I'm not just some CEO that tells people to invest and do this and that and I preach shit that I don't actually do. If you've been following me for quite some time, a little over a year ago, I invested a couple of million dollars into real estate. That business and those real estate deals literally have gone sideways. Obviously, I'm not allowed to discuss the legality and the things behind it, but it went sideways. And we're talking about a few million dollars. Not on top of that, just in the last year, as well, I've also put out almost another half a million dollars into another brick and mortar type of business uh, that's more local to, you know, obviously where I live. And I haven't seen a dime. Not because it doesn't work. It actually is working. It's just COVID really slowed things down. And it's obviously starting to pick back up and get things going. So hopefully, obviously, I'll start seeing profit. But you're talking about these are big numbers. And then in the last two months, again, it's literally been two months. Actually, as of today, I've invested my first money into crypto. Uh, crypto which I was never really a big fan of cryptocurrency, but you know what, you, you, you see it, you see numbers going up, so I put 25,000 into one of the coins, and now to today, I have about 450 to 500,000. Still haven't pulled out, but I say that to not brag or boast, I say all these things because I invest just like you guys, right? And that's not included in the other 1.2 mil that I put out for the infrastructure for the company, for my brand, for my clients recently, or another almost $300,000 that I'm building something for my clients. I'm not paying all this, uh, you know, I'm not getting all this money from the clients and just going out buying cars and houses and this and that or jewelry. I'm actually taking a lot of money, putting it back into infrastructure and things that matter most because at the end of the day, there's a reason why I've been in the game for, you know, nine years. Again, pretty much March 4, 2012 was when I became an entrepreneur myself. I started with CPA marketing. I got into multi-level marketing, uh, uh, CPA again, sorry, and then MLM. And then in 2014, I started discovering the whole dropshipping business model. So trust me, I, when I say all this stuff, it's not to tell you guys stuff that I haven't done, but I'm telling you that any kind of business, any anything you get into has risk, but the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward, right? So as at the end of the day, with that said, um, do you have anything that you want to say to you know the people that might be watching, especially about mindset and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, overall, just the, the, the thesis that you guys have to have of being your own boss is that you're going to have to do it on your own. Obviously, if you're paying for Tommy's service, you're not going to be alone. You have support. You have other people that are clients that want to help you out as well. So if you have a concern, comment, utilize the group, utilize people, be resourceful. Don't ever just put your hands up and surrender and, you know, just let life be for what it is. Yeah. Life's too damn short, man. 
It's crazy. Again, almost nine years as an entrepreneur. Again, I remember becoming an entrepreneur and I had a baby on the way. Um, at the end of the day, guys, so real quick, just to wrap it up, it's $30,000 for my service. You visit TommyRodriguez.com. The video breaks it down. You can obviously go on my Instagram wall here, watch a bunch of these videos with my clients so you guys can get a better understanding and expectations so that you can make an informed decision. So 30K, it's a 70-30 split, meaning if you make $10,000 net a month in profit, you're gonna pay the team uh, 3000 you keep 7000 for yourself. Uh, again, we have a legal contract. We have a bunch of stuff. We also have an affiliate program. We have so many other things coming up that we really want to turn this company this year into a 40 to $50 million company uh, just because one, I'm putting the systems in play to make that happen, right? My clients deserve it. Obviously, I deserve it, obviously, because, you know, putting in the work and obviously getting a lot of these clients' results. But this is passive. This Again, this business model is passive. It allows people to work another job and then allows people to work other businesses. And again, I say it in a lot of my videos, if you're wondering how can it be passive, it does, doesn't make sense to, it, you have to work hard, you have to do this. Like, no, it's bullshit, okay? And I'm gonna say that why, uh, reason why is because if you ever bought multifamily apartment complexes or a condo or a villa, you would hire property management to manage it for you, right? You don't wanna collect the rent from these tenants. You don't want to handle the legwork, the repairs, nothing, right? So you have property management. Trey paid me to manage his Amazon storefront, basically like property management. It is no different. And if you're wondering, well, if your business model works so well, why don't you have any stores? Why do this for anyone else? One, it's called multiple streams of income. You obviously want to make enough money and also help enough people. I don't believe that there's not enough money out there for everybody. So to think that, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about competition or creating competition for myself. Me, personally, I have five stores my damn self. So I do the same model and I have the, and I make money with my service and obviously, obviously through the clients as well and creating an income for them. It's the best of both worlds. You get to help other people win that's what i strive for that's what i live for i love seeing my my squad my friends my family everyone around me my clients everybody make money because you know what life's too short to be broke and miserable you know what i mean we, we don't have time for that so anyways guys with that being said i have a feeling i'm gonna get another phone call in literally two minutes um so i'm gonna wrap this up um look if you have any questions you go to my website watch the video or maybe this video was enough and you still go to my website book a call with my sales team they will answer any questions that you have about this business again past results of my clients do not guarantee or represent that the, the future success of your store we have we create a high probability of success with stores we don't sell a guarantee i'm not going to tell you that you're going to make a half a million dollars how your first six months you might not make anything because we're trying to grow your store, we're trying to you know create the feedback, we're trying to get the volume so you don't get suspended. We did, we currently have about 79% suspension rate, if you're curious. A lot of other people who are mimicking and copying my service, some of these people are dealing right now with 35, 40% suspensions because they don't know what they're doing. They're white labeling, they're just doing all this other stuff with other people that they don't know anything about Amazon. They're just trying to do it because they want a piece of the pie, they want to make money off a service that I created. And you know, imitation is the best form of flattery. And trust me, I am flattered. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, numbers don't lie. So again, there's a reason why we have so many clients winning and so many more clients who will continue to win. So other than that, guys, we're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna get something to eat. I'm hungry. You hungry? I'm hungry. Yeah, we hungry. So we're gonna get something to eat. We're gonna make these sales. Look, any questions, go to the website. You guys know what to do. Take care. Peace. Yes. Peace.